Welcome back once again, my little roaches and roachettes out there. That's right, the roach getting ready to shed his exoskeleton and move to a new studio. We've got a couple stu- uh, episodes left here in this very studio. Thank you again to Ryan Sickler for facilitating it for the, for the last year or so, and we're excited to spread our wings and fly. And I do believe, I hope, fingers crossed, we can line it up where we can get Ryan in for the final episode here in Night Pan Studios. Heading to the Roach Motel, though. That's what we're calling the new studio. I don't care what that dumb company says. They didn't say I couldn't do that. So we're going to get ready for that, my friends. I'm so excited you could be here. Thank you again for subscribing to the program. Thank you for hitting that little bell on YouTube as well. Thank you for... Uh, liking, rating, reviewing on iTunes or wherever you might listen to the audio of this podcast. It all goes uh, far and wide and it helps a great, great deal. So thank you very much for that. And do please to be buying tickets for the big show, July 16th over at uh, San Diego at Mike Drop Comedy Club. I'm excited. It's a brand new club. It's the first summer that they're open, and I'm excited that they're having me be a part of their debut uh, summer. So July 16th, two shows, San Diego. That's the big push. Beyond that, come August, we have five shows in Chicago at Zany's. We have Philadelphia, August 25th. So all those tickets are on sale now. Please to be buying them. We have some shows that I'm going to be announcing soon in Southern California. Beyond that, uh, we have some shows here in Los Angeles. July 13th, I wanted to mention, just got added to this. It's me, it's Bobby Lee, it's Mike Lawrence. We're going to be the comics on it. It's for Rich Voss and Bonnie McFarlane's show, Would You Date Him? I'm not exactly sure how it works quite yet. Uh, My competition is Bobby Lee and Mike Lawrence in terms of would you date him? I think I kind of go a little higher than some of them. I don't know. We'll find out. But uh, Annie Letterman will be on that. So if you're going to be around the L.A. area, July 13th is when that show's happening. And again, uh, follow along on Instagram at Josh underscore Potter on Twitter at J underscore Potter. And uh, get all the info about all that. Plus, going to be streaming on Twitch uh, today. This, you know, came out on the this comes out on the day after the 4th of July. And uh, I did a big stream on 4th of July. So that was a lot of fun. And we'll keep them going, my friend. You know, I took off way too long for this surgery. They said three to six month recovery time. And uh, here I am in the third month. And I'm like, I could have been out there. <laughs> and so I'm a little pissed about that getting a little bored. So I'm streaming a lot more twitch.tv slash Josh underscore Potter. So thank you if you've been joining me for that. And if you'd like to join, please to be doing so, my friend. Uh, other than that, you know, it is uh, we just had the holiday weekend. I hope you enjoyed it. Many folk boycotting Fourth of July. What with things going on in our country these days and you know that's fine if you want to do your thing it's so funny people are like i'm not celebrating this year i'm boycotting the fourth of july and then i see them on instagram they're like still at barbecues and they're still doing things like yeah but i'm not celebrating it's like go to work then if you really want to boycott fourth of july go to work like it's just any other day don't take the day off then that's what i say you can't have your cake and eat it too Uh, in terms of the resilience or the rebellion or whatever the hell it is that you're doing out there. Uh, But yes, also a big thing that happened, June is over. So all the companies around the world, you know, I just picture the CEOs getting on the phone around uh, July or June 29th and June 30th and going, we're getting the rainbow logos off, right? We're taking the... Their CEO of General Electric's like, and make sure by July 1st that goddamn rainbow is off the fu-. So they've done away with the rainbows, and now it's on to July, and it's they've changed their flags to the American flag, I'd imagine, for the next couple of times. I did see a couple of people on Twitter during uh, Pride Month. I thought this was funny. You know, they go, this is my pride flag, and it's just the American flag. This is my pride flag. And might I say... That is the gayest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> that right there. This is my pride flag. It's pretty gay, dude. Uh, but it was Pride Month last month. It also was Men's Health Month. Did not know that. And uh, your boy over here, like I said, from this, uh, from the recovery of the surgery, I've been uh, 
pretty, I don't move a lot. What's the word for that, Kristen? Uh, when you don't move a lot, it's not like sedimentary. What is it? Um, uh, shit. Yeah, you caught me here. I know yeah, what you're saying. You know what I'm saying. The people at home are going to write in the comments. They're screaming at their television sets. They're screaming in their cars. I'm that. Uh, I've been that, especially during May and then beginning part of June. I'm starting to get out there a little bit more, getting my exercise back on. But, boy, I've gotten fat. So my men's health during June has uh, decreased. But men's health is more talking prostate exams. It's trying to raise awareness of prostate cancer. Uh, cancer that only men get, I do believe. It's our breast cancer, you know. During October, they do the breast cancer stuff, and they have, you know, pink ribbons and and such. But men's health, big deal in June, evidently. And, uh, you know, some places they want to raise awareness, you know, like they do for everything else. And uh, the Eugene Emeralds up in Eugene, Oregon, their manager, it's a minor league team, you know, their manager decided to do a little stunt for Men's Health Month, and we have video of it here. He decided to sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game, uh, which teams often do during the seventh inning stretch. Uh, but he decided to uh, sing it whilst getting a prostate exam. Let's see it. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. <laughs> Uh, you can tell when the knuckle gets in there. He's take me out to the crowd. He's getting uh, a couple fingers deep. I don't I've never had I actually I'm 36. I probably should get a prostate exam at some point here uh, coming up. Probably will. Uh, have I had fingers in my butt before? Sure. Have I tried singing during it? No. Uh, but that's uh, let's see if we can watch it again here. And, and I mean, it, we only got a little snippet of it, but uh, let's see it again here. Cause he's up in the booth. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Oh boy, yeah, you can tell he's got something. And you know what? I if I'm the team, the the Eugene Emeralds. Not only am I trying to pay homage to Men's Health Month, I think I would, I would try and say this is a part of Pride Month too. Why doesn't the manager get a dick in his ass while trying to sing "Take Me Out to the Ball Game"? You know, we could have done both. You know, we could have uh, really killed two birds, one stone kind of thing here. Uh, but what an interesting stunt, getting a prostate exam whilst singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. And then does he have to go back down onto the field after that and all the players have to respect him? They're like, I mean, we all get prostate exams at some point in our lives, but at the same time, they're like, you just had fingers in your ass and now you're trying to tell, give me the green light to go home you know i mean I, it's just strange to me and then being in that broadcast booth they're like all right clear out the broadcast booth we're giving uh you know our manager uh prostate exam in here i'd be like in the broadcast booth now i got to come up back up here and sit in here it's gonna it's just strange all the way around i want to hear the aftermath i have so many questions about what went on in that i, want, I wish i was a fly on the wall in that broadcast booth there he is up in there. You can see him where Kirsten is pointing the mouse. He's up there singing into the microphone. The PA announcer has to go back and sit back up in there and go, coming to the plate. You know, it's like, it's got probably just remnant. It's like, I mean, did the man come during that? I don't know. What is this? <laughs> I just, any Stephen A. Smith video makes me laugh. Is this just a response to it? Um, yeah, I didn't it's mean like to scroll a down, but what does he like say? I smell something. Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what the PA announcer said when he walked back in the room after that was done. But, you know, other holidays have uh, come come along now. You know, obviously we're into July and July 1st is a big holiday in the baseball world. And people talk about it all the time. They used to talk about it with malice and with anger. It's Bobby Bonilla Day. And it took me a while to figure out exactly why Bobby Bonilla Day exists. I'm obviously, you know, obsessed with baseball. It's my midlife crisis. It's my ship in a bottle. It's become that uh, here in my waning years. Uh, and, uh, you know, before, I don't know, 2016, I don't really know much of the history. I'm trying to learn it as I go here. And I always was curious. I'm like, how does something like Bobby Bonilla Day exist? And it's what it is, is every July 1st, the Mets have to pay Bobby Bonilla $1.9 million. And he played his last game for them in 
1999, the year 2000, something around there, 22 years ago. So you might be asking, like, why do the Mets have to pay him $1.9 million every year? They've been doing it since 2011, and they will continue to do it until 2035. It's fucking nuts. And again, you're like, what the hell? What a great deal. I agree. And so I wanted to learn more about why it goes on, you see. Uh, and what happened was uh, Bobby Bonilla, by the way, he's going to be 72 when the final payment comes through in 2035. The deal started in 1991 when the Mets signed Bonilla to a five-year deal that was worth $29 million, which was the richest contract in professional sports at the time. Bonilla spent first three and a half seasons of the contract with the Mets uh, before being traded to the Florida Marlins. The veteran was traded back to the Mets when the Marlins tore down their 1970 or 1997 World Series squad. I missed the sports last week, and I missed it again. I just wanted to jump right in, but we can't do that. We have to play it properly. So, yes, continuing with why Bobby Bonilla Day exists. He ended up being released in January of 2000 after obviously, like I mentioned, being traded back to the Mets from the Marlins, uh, but still had to be paid his $5.9 million salary for that season. Now, at the time, the New York Mets believed that they were going to make a significant profit from the team's investments. Do you know who they invested with? A gentleman you might be familiar with. His name, Bernie Madoff. We all remember how that went. Mr. Madoff ended up uh, in federal prison. So I guess the Mets, uh, their whole investment plan didn't really work out. So instead of paying Bobby Bonilla just the $5.9 million after, uh, you know, kind of cutting him at the end of the 2000 season, they decided to defer the payments. And when you do that, they amass interest. And they're like, we're going to be fine. We got this guy Madoff. He's going to make us a whole shit ton of money. And it's going to be dope. So we don't mind paying down the road. And you and they always expect, uh, I would imagine, they would expect the player to go, no, I want the money now. But if you were in this position, why would you want the money now? Because he made so much more money than $5.9 million off of this. He just had to wait a little bit, of course. And so, uh, obviously, Mets ownership deferred Benia's salary with 8% interest and ended up spreading it across 25 years from the year 2011 to the year 2035. Of course, the Ponzi scheme that Madoff had going on there didn't exactly work out in the Mets' favor, and they deferred the payments. Ended up to their deferred payments ended up totaling to 29.8 million dollars spread out over 25 years if i'm bobby bonilla i'm having the most epic party every july 1st i don't know what bobby bobby bonilla is doing these days other than probably like scrooge mcducking into a giant pool of money that's what i would do but i mean could you imagine every july 1st you just get a little check from the new york mets 1.9 million i would throw a banger and that would be the big holiday it would be an American holiday by the time I was done with it. I would fucking have the craziest rager in different cities. It'd be like Lollapalooza. It'd be like Burt's Fully Loaded Festival without the, the comedy. It would just be the fun. Like, I would just fill up a stadium and say, let's rage. And everyone would be like, is there entertainment? I'll be like, oh, there might be or something. We're just going to drink our, like, collectively 7,000. I would but just, I don't know. It would be insane. Could I? Why isn't Bobby Bonilla doing that? I don't know. But this isn't the only person that's doing things like that. Uh, as bad as the team's decision turned out to be, the Mets aren't the only franchise that have deferred payments on players. Let's take a look at some other players that are collecting deferred payments. And I didn't know that this was a thing. It's so crazy. I, you know, just assumed that when you got cut, you got like paid a certain amount or there was something in your con like in football if you get cut baker mayfield for instance if he gets cut he's owed nine million dollars they'd have to pay him that right away there's no deferring payments in the nfl so this is all new to me learning about baseball and things like that and the uh different ways contracts work and i know it sounds like it's boring but it's exciting if you like money it's just like amazing to me that these organizations that are run by businessmen who go to college would think this was just a better way to go about things july 1st may be known as bobby bonilla day but the cincinnati reds don't exactly love that day either back in 2000 and it seems like it was the turn of the millennium 
when <laughs> shit was all going down and everyone just was like, things are going great. Clinton wasn't just in office and uh, man, the economy's booming. It's only going to get better. Little did they know. Back in 2000, the Reds acquired Ken Griffey Jr., of course, in a trade with the Seattle Mariners and quickly signed him to a nine year, one hundred and twelve point five million dollar deer deal as a part of the deferred payments arrangements. An estimated 50% of Griffey's contract was deferred from 2009 till 2024. So Griffey's got two years left where he receives $3.59 million per year from the Reds. So since 2009, he's been getting almost $4 million and uh, he will for two more years. And obviously Griffey's tenure with the Reds riddled with injuries and never really lived up to the hype. So they're still spending that money. Maybe that's why the Reds don't spend money on players that they actually have these days. In 2000, the Boston Red Sox signed Manny Ramirez to an eight year, one hundred and sixty million dollar deal. As a part of that deal, they were uh, there were thirty two million dollars in deferred payments that are owed to Ramirez, who will earn one point nine six eight million per year. And it started in 2011 and it'll go till 2026. Ramirez will be 54 by the time the payment arrangement is complete. And uh, the star slugger did help bring a World Series title to the Red Sox. So maybe it was a little bit worth it for them. Outfielder Matt Holliday was traded from Oakland to uh, the St. Louis Cardinals during the 09 season. In 2010, the Cardinals signed Holiday to a seven year, $120 million contract with $15 million of the deal being deferred beginning in 2020. So this just started for Matt Holiday. And Matt Holiday, by the way, can we look up something about uh, Matt Holiday? Wasn't Matt Holiday like tons of DUIs and that's why like the Colorado Rockies aren't acknowledging <laughs> something like that or they were like he was one of the guys they were thinking of bringing back or something like that for uh does it say anything about DUIs am I thinking of somebody else I don't know I'm sorry I've been in an Uber for the last two hours folks uh he spent a night in jail for and well let me ask, uh, get it unless I pay for it Oh, God. What is that? The Pittsburgh Gazette? Yeah. What a rag. Fuck the Pittsburgh Gazette. Uh, continuing on, the Rocky signed slugger Todd Helton to a two-year contract extension toward the end of, end of his career in 2010. He's scheduled to receive $13 million in deferred payments from 2014 till 2023. This is insane. And then there's one happening right now. Max Scherzer, who is a pitcher for the Mets, he was signed by the Washington Nationals back in 2015. Uh, to a seven-year, $210 million contract in free agency. As a part of that contract, Scherzer is slated to receive deferred payments totaling $15 million from 2022 to 2028. So he's just starting to get uh, his deferred payments. If I'm a baseball player, why not? I would just defer it all because they have to pay interest on it. I'm sure the teams are like, no, 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 no. But if they're giving me, I would try and get as much of it deferred as humanly possible. I mean, I wish I could do that right now. Just like, oh, you owe me money for a thing? Like, if I could go to a comedy club and they're like, you know, here's your money, I'd go, let's defer it till 20 years from now and make it seven times the amount of this, please. I would do that in a heartbeat. And the fact that I found this out and that more people aren't doing it, Although we just read a few handfuls of people that are. I don't know if teams are wising up because why would you want to do this? I don't know. But it's just bizarre. I thought it was interesting. And that's a holiday celebrated. I mean, Stephen Cohen from the Mets, the new owner of the Mets, he's richer than God. He doesn't give a shit about paying uh, Bobby Bonilla $1.9 million a year. The previous ownership would, like, ignore it, and everyone would use it as a joke. They'd be like, these guys are a joke. They're playing Bobby Bonilla. Stephen Cohen, like, loves it. I think next year they're probably going to bring Bobby Bonilla in for Bobby Bonilla Day and, like, have a bobblehead and shit and have a good time with it, which is fun. He could easily just drop 15 grand or 15 million right now and just stop the payments uh, and not pay interest on the going forward to 2035. But I think he enjoyed He's just like, ah, it's fun, which is a good attitude to have for sure. But I thought that was interesting. And uh, if you ever hear people talking around this holiday weekend about July 4th and things like that. People also, they're baseball fans. They know all about Bobby Bonilla Day. But as we learned, also Ken Griffey Jr. Day. It's very interesting. Had this story sent to me by many a Roach reporter, but I'll give T-Bone credit because he is the one who sent it to me first. There was yet another 
shooting at a subway. And I'm not talking about the one that transports you underground. I'm talking about the sandwich shop. That's right. We've seen in 2022, we've had multiple shootings at subways. And uh, do you recall there was one about a drive through as well, Kirsten? You remember it was like there was too much hot sauce on a chicken sandwich. Was that the, the reason? Do you remember that story? Um, I don't remember it off the top of my head now. I remember, I forget who was the guest that day, but there was a story of a person who got too much hot sauce on their sub and then they went, or their sandwich or what have you, they went back around to the drive-thru and shot the person in the thing, or shot into the window at the very least. In this case, the reason is mayo. What do you think about mayo, Kirsten? I'm a big fan of mayo. I I'm a big fan of mayo, mayo too. I feel like ketchup. mayo over ketchup by a mile. If I'm ranking condiments, ketchup is at the bottom. Ketchup is in the sewer of condiments to me. I would rather have the jizz of a thousand men on any piece of food than ketchup. You know, there are people that walk around in shirts that say, I like ketchup on my ketchup. Ugh, those people are put them in camps and gas them. That's what I say. <laughs> ketchup on ketchup, you are disgusting. And you don't deserve to walk the earth amongst the rest of us. Oh my God. Ketchup disgusts me to the point of like anger. You know what I mean? Like I remember there was that uh, guy in Jackass. Do you remember the Jackass movie where the guy was like, he had like a, a fear of mustard yeah, yeah, yeah. And he went like, he's like, I rank, he's like, mustard, period, blood, and then like, you know, the list goes on. That's how I am with ketchup. I cannot stand it. It's the smell of it, the fucking just, it's our word condiments. It's for simpletons. And people are like, in, in Europe, you know, they put, I'm not saying it's like, I'm like, oh, in Europe, it's all hoity-toity. They put fr mayo on their fries, and I like that. I'm not against that at all. I love mayo so much. But this person, oh, God. Look at this stupid shirt. Where do you even, I mean, there was. I'm sure it says, you, I mean, you can buy it online, but where do you buy it? What store has that, you know? Where is ketchup, like, does this place claim ketchup? Like a city? I don't or know. Or like a state or anything like that? They're like, we're the ketchup capital of the world. If you want to talk R words, there are also people that say catsup. Well, there is such a thing as catsup. It's the generic form of ketchup. Really? Look, Yeah, look that up. Turns out I'm R worded. No, it's not that. It's like people just say that. But also, I think they're actually, you know, uh, referring to this particular brand. It's sort of like, you know, Kleenex is a brand of tissue. This is another. Type it in. K uh, C A T S U P. Am I wrong? No, you're right. You're right. I'm looking at it here. It's like shittier ketchup, which is yeah. impossible to me. That's like, that's like, it seems like it would be impossible to make like, I don't know the difference. Maybe you can find out the difference while I go into this uh, story real quick. Like, wh you know, ketchup is the bare minimum shittiest condiment there is. Cats up being below that is disgusting. Cat in calling it that, like, let's, let's make it sound like, uh, you know, we have speech impediments when we say it. Like, it's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. And I couldn't possibly order it uh, without having immense shame. A customer was apparently so enraged by the liberal serving of mayonnaise. I, I read that sentence and I was like, what's this got to do with politics? Uh, but they just mean like this person got a little too out of pocket when it came to the serving of mayonnaise on the Subway sandwich that he pulled out a gun and opened fire in the Atlanta fast food shop. I mean, to jump to gun right away, like if there's too much mayo, you go, hey, that's a little much. Can I get another one? If they're like, no, you're going to eat the amount of mayo that I spread on here, then maybe pull out the gun. But, but, you know, there's a couple steps to get to before that. Cops say the suspect whipped out a gun during the dispute and shot two employees, killing one and severely injuring another. That's insane. The police identified Brittany Macon, 26, as the woman who was killed and said the other victim is a 24-year-old woman as well. 
Uh, police arrested 36-year-old Atlanta man in the connection of the incident, though officials have not released his name. Willie Glenn, the owner of the sub shop, told Fox 5 that one of the victim's kids was in the store at the time and bore witness to the shooting. Good God, maybe keep your kids at home. Uh, when you're working at Subway, but I guess, you know, if you can't afford a sitter, you got to have them. Uh, the Atlanta Journal Constitution reported that the child is only five. Glenn described both victims as model employees who only started working at the outlet a few weeks ago. Model employees. Maybe if they were just, they could, I mean, I bet the owner was a little, he goes, while I don't encourage putting extra mayonnaise on the subs, because, you know, that's some cost out of my pocket. You know, they were model employees. I guess what else is he going to say? It back, you, go, you know, in the, in the same time, he's like, man, not only would they not have got shot, it would have saved me a little extra cash if they just put the normal amount of mayonnaise on that sub. It breaks my heart to know that someone had the audacity to point a weapon and shoot someone for as little as too much mayonnaise on a sandwich, Glenn said. The interim police chief, Darren, uh, something or other, echoed Glenn's sense of disappointment, calling the incidents a senseless tragedy. Now, uh, I mean, like I said, I love mayo. You can't do too much. I mean, too much mayo is gross, I guess. I'm, you know, whatever. It's one of those things where I'd kind of be like, eh. But if we're putting cats up on there and I didn't ask for that, I might have to pull out that Glock. You know what I'm saying? I kind of would side with the criminal in that case. We need individuals to talk out their disputes, walk away, and not pick up guns. I think that's safe to say. The guy probably could have just asked them to remake it. Instead of pulling out a gun and killing them, because then you're not going to get any sandwich unless you go back there and make it yourself. You know, if you shoot the employees, you know, you're fucked then. You're not getting a sub at all. Sorry, Charlie. I would be like, can you make it again? And then if they were like, no, you're going to eat this fucking jar of mayonnaise I just spread on here. Then maybe I get a little gunny. The shooting comes just weeks after a Chinese food delivery man in New York was allegedly shot dead by a customer who was angry he didn't receive enough duck sauce. Golly. The condiments are the tipping point for some people. Could you imagine just like showing up there as the delivery guy of the Chinese food place? And then he goes, there's not enough duck sauce here. You'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. Re- I mean, I didn't pack the food. And you just get shot. It's like. There is a reason there's a saying called don't shoot the messenger. Because they're just bringing the news. That guy's just bringing your food. He didn't make it. He didn't prepare it, you know. Now, in the case of this Mayo thing, they they made it. They're sub artists. They made it in front of you. You know, you saw them do it. But, man, I wish wish there was video of it because I want to see, like, how long did it take between him noticing there's too much mayonnaise And then how did they react to him saying there's too much mayonnaise? Like, what happened between the gun coming out? It couldn't have just him saw them slather it on and go, what the fuck are you doing? And then, you know, I want to know what else went down with that in there. Oh, say, can you see my beautiful balls? Manscaped wants me, wants you to see them real good. I mean, I have a bit of a forest down there and Manscaped has... Let me cut through the bush, if you will. Manscaped is here to give you Minuteman the respect he deserves. Manscaped products are beautifully designed to have your body looking good from head to toe for the beach, the pool, any late night fireworks. And right now you can use code Potter to get 20% 20 off and free shipping at Manscaped.com. How has Manscaped helped my confidence? I got to tell you. I mean, you see me. This is my arm, folks. You can imagine what's going on down here with my pubes. And boy, oh boy, when a girl gets down there now, it is like, whoa, I was expecting much worse. And now I can just uh, keep it nice and trim, keep it nice and tidy down there, thanks to the Lawnmower 4.0, the fourth generation trimmer. It features cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents, you know, getting your balls all snagged up in there. You've got advanced skin safe technology and the lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and has a 400 K led spotlight. So you can get in all those hard to reach areas, uh, declare your independence this year with the perfect package. We've got the lawnmower trimmer, the weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, the crop preserver, ball deodorant, the crop reviver toner, 
performance boxer briefs. And it all comes in a nice little travel bag to keep you feeling good all over this great nation if you're traveling. It's time to shine up the Liberty Bells by going to manscaped.com. Get 20% off and free shipping with code Potter. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com using the code Potter. Unlock your confidence this 4th of July, even though it's 5th of July, you should unlock your confidence, whatever the date is, even if it's not July. And that's with Manscaped. Paul's so beautiful, you'll have the Statue of Liberty blushing. Again, manscaped.com, use code Potter for 20% off and free shipping. Thanks, Manscaped. But thank you to T-Bone, a Roach reporter, sending that out. If you want to send me anything, Show at gmail.com is the place to do it, my friends. Another fast food story, and now this one's interesting because I didn't even know this was a thing. And it has to do with McDonald's. And, you know, if you go to McDonald's and other parts of the world, they often have specialty items to reflect the culture of that part of the world. And evidently in Hawaii, they had a thing called Simon. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Can we get a Google on that? S-A-I-M-I-N. It's noodles. It's like a noodle soup. Does this have one of those pronunciation things? Salmon. Semen? It's called semen? Salmon. I think it's saying salmon. I heard, do it one more time. Here, I'll do it slow. I'll turn it up a little bit. Salmon. Salmon. It just sounds like someone saying semen. But salmon, okay, so uh, evidently salmon, a, uh, a noodle soup, you know, it's just basically Hawaiian ramen. It's like, you know, between ramen, pho, salmon, let's just, it's all noodles in soup. So evidently uh, they had to stop serving this at McDonald's in Hawaii. Uh, they this article goes, they bid aloha to a local favorite salmon no longer available at the fast food chain. Uh, and evidently it's because McD- uh, McDonald's was a 40 year client of Okahara salmon and said they stopped selling the snack without an immediate plan to start up again. So evidently uh, this this place that they've been buying it from for 40 years had to close down for good after being an island favorite since the 1930s um i don't know why i mean covid related they had to the shut down probably it doesn't really say one honolulu resident uh said that he grew up on the okahara si- salmon at mcdonald's it's good one of the best ones i don't know my mom loves it that's weird that's like when people are like you know where the best coffee is mcdonald's you know what i say to those people i go you have a coffee problem you have a, my dad, my dad was obsessed. He's like, got to go get coffee at McDonald's. The line would be like, you know, around the whole drive through out in the street in the morning. You know, people getting egg McMuffins, people getting their breakfast. Uh, maybe they were all getting coffee. I don't know. My dad would be like, I got to get it. I'm like, we could get a coffee from literally anywhere else in so much less time. But he would just sit in that line. He'd like leave an extra hour early just to sit in that line at uh McDonald's. Another Oahu resident said he will need to go somewhere else for the snack. That's what I'm saying. Like, if this is such a Hawaiian thing, this salmon, this noodle dish, it's like, like I said, ramen or pho or whatever. I would imagine there's nice restaurants with salmon in it. You know, it couldn't have just been McDonald's thing. I bet there's like moms in Hawaii or grandmas in Hawaii who make great salmon. But these ones are like, nope, got to go to the McDonald's one. <laughs> it's so bizarre to me. It's like McDonald's really does. But evidently it's all this Okahara salmon company and they're the ones shutting down. So now they need a new supplier is what we're getting at. And uh, I think someone should just go if they own a, a ramen restaurant, they're just like, hey, we'll do it. I mean, what's the, really the difference? At the end of the day, from ramen to salmon. I mean, does it say what else is in that uh, dish, Kirsten, when you pulled up the salmon uh, Google there? Let's see what else is in it. Because then I think you could just take ramen and just go like, I'll throw in some Hawaiian shit. We got like a pineapple. What yeah, else? Yeah, the number one question is if it's the same as ramen. And it says that the dough has more eggs and a higher concentration of ash. Cool. As if anyone's going to (laughs) notice. At least the white people. (laughs) I don't know. That's what's so funny. I wonder if this guy, I wonder if the native of Hawaii are like, 
no, not same and leaving McDonald's, or if it's the white people that live there. I mean, it looks good. And McDonald's evidently made the best one in the country uh, or in the uh, in the state. But I'm sure, folks, they'll be able to find it someplace else. But there was a Hawaiian roach out there who was up in arms about this. So, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to take anything away from anyone's happiness. If you're missing out on the same, I'll, I'll take up arms. You want me to go down there and act like they put too much mayo on, su- on my Subway sandwich because they got rid of the same? I'll come down there and support you. You know, that's all I'm saying. Elsewhere in the news, Roach Reporter sending this one in. Uh, this is from Justin N. And now this is a funny little sticky wicket here. These people who... Now, I don't do this. I, I don't even like doing this one-on-one. Airdropping things to people. I feel like it could get lost. I feel like I pushed the wrong one. You know, every now and then I'll be like laying in bed and I'll be like, you know, doing an email or something. And it'll pop up. It'll be like, do you want to airdrop this to... And it's just someone in the building. And I don't know who that is. And I'm like, does, my, does it show my phone on there? And it does. You know, you got to turn your shit off. And people say we've heard stories of people on the subway getting airdropped things. I've been on a subway where I've gotten airdropped just memes, which is like whatever. But like uh, you could get really dicey with it. Also, a man on a Southwest flight reportedly airdropped a sexually explicit photo to all passengers on Saturday, leading the police Uh, leading to the police waiting to escort him off the plane upon his arrival. That's what's so wild. It's like, I wonder if he airdropped it and was like, (laughs) everyone knows where it comes from. And then you're on the plane with these people. You're like, oh, no one said anything. No one knows. Ooh, I've sent my dick pic to the entire plane. Meanwhile, the pilot's up there. He's like, "Uh, we've got a dick pic here on my cell phone, and uh, the cops are going to be waiting for you when you get off. Like, obviously, they're going to... You have to land in the plane. You can't just like sneak off. You all go out the same little jet bridge there. So what do you think was going to happen? Uh, in a now viral TikTok, user at Daddy Strange 333 addressed the man as Larry, and he is seen getting reprimanded by the user and a flight attendant for allegedly sharing a graphic photo with all passengers, especially as kids sat behind him. The post is withholding the full name she references in her TikTok until representatives for Southwest Airlines and the FBI respond to the post request for confirmation. I saw his iPad had airdrop open, so I knew it was him. And yes, I sure did make a scene. Daddy Strange captioned the original video, which now has 51 million views is this the video or is this just screen grabs i can only find a screen grab of it but you can see larry right here oh boy that was larry now do you think before i read more into it does larry look like a guy who wanted to do this or was it he looks very boomery could there have been a scenario where larry accidentally did this what do you think i think larry was swinging a shot here he said, there's how many people on this plane? Someone's, Someone's going like to be into see. it. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's 200 souls aboard this plane. One of them's bound to love this dick pic. And also it's like, when did he take it? Did he take it before he left for the airport? Did he go into the bathroom of the plane to take it? Is it just, did he have his dick out on the plane? I mean, I have so many questions about that, but what is it? Can you read the uh, things to me, please? Because the, ca- the cameras are blocking. It says, meet Larry, who just airdropped a whole flight photos of his pee-pee. Thankfully, I accepted it, saw who sent it. Thankfully, I accepted it. And immediately started speaking up. Stay tuned for the police escort. And then on the other side. Um, it's just doubled over. It says oh, the same oh, thing. Oh, 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 There's Larry for you. Uh, uh, why are you doing that? A flight attendant asked Larry after Daddy Strange. I don't like how they refer to the passenger who outed him as Daddy Strange. <laughs> just because it's their TikTok name. Like, give the woman her her do they just trying to get her more followers on the app or what uh just having a little fun he emotionlessly replied well there you go i guess that answers my question on if it was an accident or not because here's the thing that could very well have been maybe your girl's on the plane with you and you guys are like having a little like oh you're making some tension or something like that so you want to airdrop her a picture but you go like did i just airdrop that to the entire plane Like, that could happen. I could see that being a scenario. And if that were me in that case, I would go, oh, I would stand up on the plane like a 9-11 hijacker. (laughs) And I would go, 
Oh my God, folks. <laughs> Attention, everyone. Do not open what I just airdropped. I airdropped a inappropriate photo. Please ignore it. If you want to open it, I'm not going to be offended. You could take a look, but I'm warning you, it's bad. And they'd be like, sir, please sit down. The air marshal will come and like put a gun to my head. But yeah, I would be like, I would get, I would, everyone would be like, what the fuck? That's if it was on accident. But this evidently was on purpose. So he's like, just trying to have a little fun. <laughs> what a fucking loon. In the moment, uh, then someone, you know, told him, daddy strange, actually. She speaks up again. She says, it's sexual harassment. Disgusting. Which the flight attendant then agreed with. In the moment, Larry apologized, but according to the follow-up video posted Sunday, Daddy Strange claimed that Larry quickly went back to viewing the photo, which Daddy Strange claimed showed a woman giving him oral sex. Well, if, I mean, I didn't realize it was, I thought it was just a dick pic. This guy just wants to show off. He's like, yeah, I get my dick sucked once in a while. Also then, like, then in that case, how did they know it was actually Larry's penis? He was maybe he was just sending some porn that he was enjoying on the plane. He's like, you know, his sort of like recommendation for what to watch on this flight is the in-flight entertainment boring. Check out this video I've been watching. <laughs> oh, my Lord. We do think he has a kink. Daddy Strange said, gagging at the fact that she played into it. Uh, so, you know, she's assuming that his kink is like other people noticing it and going like, oh, my Lord. He's like, oh, yeah, are you disgusted? Oh, yeah, I got a whole plane of disgusted people. And then he's J and his D. We learned about that one guy who got he like jerked off four times on a plane before they finally said something to him. So maybe dad, uh, maybe this guy, Larry, he can rub one out before the thing hits the ground. The woman said that she and seven or eight other passengers met with the FBI once they landed and said that Larry was escorted off the plane. She doesn't know if anything happened to Larry, but agents reportedly told her uh, that they were trying to book him for the weekend. No further information was immediately available on his status. We can confirm this unfortunate incident occurred on a recent flight from Detroit to Denver. Southwest Airlines spokesperson told The Post. This is what you get for flying Southwest, folks. Fly with the animals on Southwest. It's just slightly above spirit, and it's all free-for-all. You could end up sitting next to a guy like Larry because it's all just open. Go, you don't. There's no seats. It's a free-for-all. Now you got a guy airdropping you a fucking porn, and you're sitting next to him. Fly in a reputable airline. Our flight attendants immediately addressed the situation, and the crew requested local law enforcement officers meet with the flight upon arrival, which they did and subsequently apprehended the individual responsible. Southwest Airlines maintained zero tolerance for this obscene and unacceptable behavior, and we offer our sincere apologies to other customers on board. Could you imagine being in the FBI, and they're like, we have an issue with a Southwest flight, and this guy thinks like, oh my God, here we go. This is what we've all been training for. I'm going to be like fucking Bruce Willis and Die Hard right now. This is, we have to save a plane full of passengers from a terrorist. And they're like, oh no, some dildo just airdropped his dick pic on, on the flight. And then you have to go address that. That's what you've been training for. So now you're in the FBI and you're just like, sir, did you or did you not send an obscene photo to every single person on this flight? And now you have to interrogate this fucking loser. I think it's fun. Maybe he'll get banned forever from flying like everybody else out there these days. This one comes to us by way of uh, Josh, not me, different Josh. Uh, and this is an interesting story because you see a lot of problems in the country right now. You know, everyone, every, oh, the courts are overturning. Uh, different basic rights for women, for uh, maybe LB LGBTQ people. I mean, it's getting uh, a little hairy, but in some courts, they're just not paying attention. And in Minnesota, that happened here. As a matter of fact, it's something you don't see every day. On Friday, uh, THC infused edibles and beverages became legal in the great state of Minnesota after a law containing the legalization measure was included in a health and human services funding bill. How did this measure go through? Well, critically, a key Republican state senator who co-chaired the committee that passed it didn't read the text closely enough. I mean, we can all relate to that. 
I'm a guy. I don't even, I mean, look at all this text in front of me right here. I'm like, what's this say? Oh, cool. That's going to be a funny story. And then I get to it and I'm like, oh, that really wasn't that good. (laughs) I do that all the time. Let alone, you know, I do that with how many terms of service agreements have we all clicked boxes on that we don't read? Well, evidently, if you're a senator, you should probably read the laws that you're passing. And maybe we should use this to our advantage. We can start sneaking things into bills and legislature when obviously people aren't reading it all the way. That's what we got to hope for. So evidently, uh, you know, this senator didn't read things very closely. And according to the Minneapolis Star Tribune, Senator Jim Abler said he didn't realize the new law would legalize edibles containing Delta 9 THC before it passed and thought he was just regulating existing CBD products. I thought we were doing a technical fix and it winded up having a broader impact than I expected. He, he told uh, everyone at the legislature uh, and now they. He's trying to get the law rolled back. House Democrats and Governor Tim Walz, both of whom support recreational marijuana legalization, are unlikely to agree with such a request to roll things back. And Majority Leader Ryan Winkler uh, called Abler's suggestion to roll back the law ridiculous. Minnesota's reformers account adds another great detail after Abler, along with bipartisan conference committee of House and Senate members, voted unanimously for the amendment. Abler then (laughs) said out loud. That doesn't legalize marijuana. We didn't just do that, did we? <laughs> I wish I could have saw a video of that. Him just going like, what? Oh, he's clutching his pearls because marijuana is now legal. It's not even really marijuana. It's the Delta 9 shit, you know? That's not real, right? Delta 9 that shit that like gives me a headache because I'll smoke 65 joints of it and I'm like, Am I, is this, is this weed? I remember I, at Skank Fest they had, uh, and I think it was one of their sponsors. I'm not trying to like shit on it or anything like that, but they had like f- in the green rooms, fish bowls of pre-rolls. And I was like, you know, you know me, I thought I died and went to fucking heaven. I'm like stuff in my pockets and shit. And I grabbed a bunch of pre-rolls and I was out, you know, the goddamn comedy jam was happening and I'm smoking them. And I would like, they were kind of harsh and like. You know, I was like, I smoked six of these. I'm not, I don't even think I'm high. And someone was like, oh, that's that Delta eight stuff. I go, oh, but this is Delta nine. Is there a difference? Do you know anything about these things, Kirsten? No, I don't. I've heard of the Delta eight and nine and I don't understand either. of them. Oh, is Delta nine. Maybe Delta nine is like real then. Maybe it's like actual THC and Delta eight's like, oh, this is a uh, synthetic. I don't know. I'm not one of these, you know, there's uh, guys at the comedy store. I love them so much. Like, uh, like Frank Castillo, we had him on the program. Go watch that episode. If you haven't, uh, his buddy JP is like, he's the guy, like he'll tell you like a wine taster, you know, he could like, you know, like, Oh, I hint, sense a hint of this or that. He knows like everything about concentrates and all this stuff. You know what I, happens when I start getting spoken to about that kind of thing? Because I'm such trailer trash, my eyes just gloss over like I'm in school. I don't know any, I'm like, I don't, does it get as high? I carry, I'm still the guy who carries around a bowl and like a fucking cellophane of weed. You know what I mean? Like even here in legal California where it's like you go and you buy it and it's in a fucking beautiful jar or in a nice little bag. They come very like commercially packaged i'm still out here like putting shit in a ziploc bag like a fucking savage so i'm the wrong guy to like understand just because i'm a stoner to the nth degree i'm the wrong guy to understand the details and the things that go into it for sure but i think that's fun hey if you're in minnesota stock up on edibles go get them my friends and uh, I think, like I said, I think that Delta 9 might actually be the real shit, come to think of it. But you're talking to the wrong guy here if you want to know actual, um, you know, whatever science, I guess, on it here. This one's good. The title just says horse sex. Boy, oh boy, I could use some of that. Uh, from Tyler Kivett, who is one of the biggest roaches out there. God, God bless you, buddy. Thank you for sending this in. A Texas man who admitted to having sex with a horse and sexually assaulting several other horses has been jailed for a decade. How do we know it's assault? I mean, I guess the horse can't give consent. But what if the horse is like really into it? I mean, they, they don't know. And I thought this was a girl at first, but it's a guy. It's like Jean, Jean-Marie Bougoma. That seems like a chick's name. 
It's a dude, though. It's like one of those French uh, names, you know, or something. Jean, I, I mean, maybe because his name, he was named Jean-Marie. I mean, his parents fucked him over. Now he's fucking horses. This is what you do when you name your kid something like that. He was convicted on Wednesday after pleading guilty to bestiality. The sick acts occurred at a San Antonio equine border facility or boarding facility on at least three occasions between June 2020 and February 2021. We all know the famous video of Mr. Hands, correct? Do you know that one, Kirsten? I don't know if I do. Well, don't look it up. I remember I was at a college party when I introduced Mr. Hands to my friends, and I forget what comic. It might have been Stan Hope. It could have been Bobby Slayton. I don't even remember what comic. There was a comic who had the video of Mr. Hands just on their website, which was the funniest move of all time. And uh, I came across it. It's a video of a man being fucked by a horse. So he's not fucking the horse. The horse is fucking him. And if you've ever seen a horse's penis, it is tremendously big. And so the man is getting fucked by this horse. And the creepiest part is when the horse pulls out, you can tell the horse, you know, came into the man. And the guy filming it, he goes, he came and I remember that was the most disturbing part. I showed it in a dorm room to friends, and there was one kid who I, I saw a decade later who came up to me and goes, hey, man, you know what? I just want to say, uh, you know that horse video you showed us that one night when we were just, like, getting drunk, pre-gaming? Uh, kind of, it kind of changed me, like, forever. <laughs> <laughs> that was... I mean... You couldn't have told me a better compliment. <laughs> I mean, it was something I just, I still laugh about it. But most people have seen Mr. Hands at this point. It's like an internet meme or whatever. In this case, this man was fucking the horses. And by the way, Mr. Hands died. Because the horse, like, uh, fucked his guts to, to no end and he died. If you didn't know that part of the story. This man didn't die because he was doing the fucking. The owner noticed uh, soon after uh, that two of his horses were injured and a vet later determined the animals had been sexually assaulted. What, did they do a rape kit on the horse? That's crazy. So this guy's like fucking them pretty good because he's hurting them for Christ's sake. That's terrible. In the first instance, uh, the man was caught on surveillance camera walking through the stables naked. Oh, so he's just seeing which one gets his dick hard. He's like, ooh, there's a gray one over there. Look at the b-hole on that one. I mean, like, what is he looking for exactly? I would imagine I would be like, is this one short enough? Like, he, I don't know. You've got to look for the right height or something like that. I mean, this guy. And the horses aren't talking, so he's going in there fucking them. If he didn't hurt them, you know, they would have been just fine. Authorities said that the man went to the stables again months later and had sex with one of the horses. Two other horses had also been hobbled, which meant their legs were bound together. Oh, that's so they don't kick him, probably. You know, because if he's trying to fuck him, that's, you know, they could kick him, and that would kill him, probably, at the end of the day. When the owner caught the man back at the stable in February last year, authorities obtained a warrant that determined DNA taken from one of the horses <laughs> matched that of the suspect. Can't leave your cum in the horse. Come on, guy. Speaking of wild horses, let's talk about wild moms. Love me a wild mom story, you know? And it's very interesting. There's a lot of uh, things going on right now because I think there's another story uh, here. Oh, yes. Speaking of horses, there is a horse heiress who uh, this woman, an Australian horse heir heiress, is not fucking the horses. Uh, she's fucking children. Uh, she's saddled with charges after being accused of having sex with a 14-year-old boy four times in a single day. And you know what's funny? Because I saw this story come out, and this was uh, sent in by somebody. Uh, I believe it was Luke Rutz who sent this bad boy in. But you know what's interesting about stories like this when you go and you read like the comments? It's always a bunch of dudes in there. Usually uh, the type of dudes that have like an American Eagle in their fucking profile picture and that kind of thing. The kind of dudes that usually would be like, Hillary Clinton's got a cabal in the basement of a pizza place where she's sex trafficking children. They're the same people who look at a story like this and they go, oh, that guy's not a vic. That 14-year-old boy, he's just lucky. Add a boy. That kind of thing. It's so weird to me because it's like, don't you hate pedophiles? But then when it's like a girl doing it to a guy, you're like, <laughs> I don't understand. So I don't understand some of these... Uh, People who are like, 
I'm a big pedophile chaser. And then they like look past the obvious ones. They're like, well, that's free speech. That's not, you know, it's bizarre. But in this case, Savannah Daisley, 45, faced with uh, Waverly Local Court in Sydney. This is in Australia. Uh, so some autistic people. Ye? Uh, they have uh, sex abuse allegations uh, that uh, are quite disturbing, evidently. The glamorous mother of two, who is the daughter of famed Aussie horse breeder Ross Daisley, so she's like famous, strongly denying these accusations and pled not guilty. Cops claim the unbridled Daisley molested the minor four times before 5 p.m. on May 20th last year. What a, t- I mean, really just getting it in before 5 p.m. She's just doing it during work hours. It's unclear whether the pair were known uh, were known to each other prior to the alleged acts. Her defense or uh, her defense lawyer cried nay. They put that in there because it's a nice little horse pun when we're talking about the raping of a 14 year old. Hilarious. Arguing that the accusations against his socialite client were made in spite of. And that it was an oath versus oath case. However, prosecutors uh, claim evidence straight from the horse's mouth exists. Another horse pun t- during the raping of a 14 year old. Love it. He said a police officer told him about a recording of a tawdry phone call made by the heiress in which she allegedly admits to kissing the teen. Richardson claimed that the recording reveals that she had little recollection of the incident, perhaps due to her being intoxicated at the time. Well, that'll do it. I've left a few voicemails where I'm like, someone was like, oh, that voicemail you left me last night was hilarious. I'm like, I did what now? (laughs) I don't remember doing that. So this woman just got blackout drunk and instead of, uh, you know, texting an ex or calling up somebody and being like, I love you, she decided to like hook up with a 14 year old. But she says, I thought you were going to call the police on me. I thought we had placed this in a little box and thrown it deep into the sea, the prosecutor told the court. Uh, The officer's instruction to me was the phone call was quite damning to her. And the facts are that admissions were made that were captured on telephone intercept. And it's quite a serious manner. Her Instagram account has been deleted, which is a shame. But a screenshot of a recent post obtained by uh, news.com.au features a caption penned by the heiress revealing uh, that she was 223 days sober. The post also reveals that she had walked away from her partner of eight years. That'll take fucking a 14-year-old while you're blackout drunk to maybe make some different life choices, I would imagine. The company website reads, over a number of years, Savannah has helped tens of thousands of people detoxify their bodies, lose weight, heal their digestion, improve strength and fitness, eliminate stress, reverse the aging process, overcome various adverse health conditions through the benefits of detoxification and is passionate about doing so. Well, she's trying to reverse the aging process so she can go back to 14, evidently. The brunette is also the author of two books, 14 Day Smart Cleanse and the forthcoming Epigenics. Well, 14 Day Smart. She loves the number 14. I think this woman is just obsessed with the number 14, I guess, at the end of the day, because, you know, 14 year old, 14 day cleanse. Her father, Ross Daisley, shot to fame after his thoroughbred thoroughbred racehorse uh, won the prestigious Royal Ascot and new market races back in 2003. Horse women are strange. Have you ever come across these women, Kirsten? Maybe it's different in Iowa. <laughs> yeah, it's different because they're probably crazier. Oh, really? Yeah, because there's a lot of horses, a lot of country girls. But yes, horse people are another breed. Like rich horse girls. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, that, yeah, yeah. But even maybe the other ones too. Like which, describe one for me. Like I'm just thinking of like anyone I knew in school or like middle school that would like just wore horse shirts and like were obsessed with horses in general. Oh yeah, it is. And they have like My Little Ponies and stuff. Do you think they're sexually into horses? You know what I mean? Like, cause girls, like they ride them and it's like, it's the first time their clit like feels good or something. You know what I'm saying? Then they start getting weird. They're like, they start growing their hair like a horse and they're combing it. They use mane and tail shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Horse people were always strange to me. They're just like, especially the rich girl ones. Cause they're like, I got to go to the stables. And then I feel like they're just flicking beans all the time. In the stables, they're like this guy walking around all naked and shit. 
But let's talk about this wild mom. That was a wild mom, but this one's even more wild. This one coming from Justin M. This involves a high school dance, and boy, do we love a wild mom at a high school dance. A posh Long Island enclave became the subject of scandal after a high school dance got out of hand when a group of moms gate crashed the event and went wild. Oh, this is a bunch of moms. This is exciting. One mom reportedly pooped on the bathroom floor while another made out with a senior, stated page six, citing that with well, a post of one of the women who witnessed the mess. What a fucking time. This is like, I mean, one is, I mean, the one making out with a senior, that's funny. And then one's like, oh, you're going to make out with a senior? I'll do one better. I'm going to go shit on the bathroom floor. The mom's Facebook group post allegedly claimed it was really a nice evening until some moms decided to act like absolute pigs and get stupid drunk, poop on the bathroom floor, do drugs in the restroom, sneak in alcohol, and dance inappropriately. These sound like fun ass. I want to go to this fucking dance. Holy shit. You know, like we were talking last uh, last show about the NBA draft and all the moms there. Man, oh man. Could you imagine a group of them coming to a high school dance? Oh boy. Just wow to the disgusting, pitiful moms who conducted themselves that way. I feel bad for their sons. That does suck. If your mom's like tongue kissing the football team at the school dance, you're like, mom. You know, that's like, that's the subject of like cuck porn right there. Mom, what are you doing? She's like, shut up and watch me fuck the football team. As per page six, the posts related to the event were taken down from the Facebook group page. Another source said of the scene, which sounds like an 80s movie starring Corey Feldman and Corey Haim. It's not my observation. That's in this fucking article. Two girls, one cup. Uh, <laughs> that's what it says, too. It's combined with Corey Haim and two girls, one cup. Not a great, uh, great comparison. One mom made out with a senior on the dance floor. Boys were dancing around with no shirts on. The moms had zero shame. Reportedly, the venue where the party was conducted uh, has banned the high school from holding any other high-profile party in the future. It's crazy. Were these, like, the chaperones? How nuts would that be if, like, all of a sudden the chaperones are, like, doing coke and they're fucking getting wasted and just they're the ones that are... It's like the kids all of a sudden have to be like, this is a little out of hand. And they're becoming like the chaperones at the end of the day. A rep for the venue told page six, it's very disturbing when rumors snowball. They added that they have another event scheduled with the same school, but now with uh, things uh, as they stand, that could be a long wait. The police have arrived uh, that or the police had arrived that the scene, but only uh, because of the moms had a cut on her foot and her high heel and needed to be taken to the hospital. So they didn't get called for anything other than this woman needing first aid. So what a wild. I want to find the pictures of these moms. If you know anything about this high school dance, and it doesn't say what high school it is, unfortunately. But if you've come across anything about this story, I need to know these moms' names. I need Instagram accounts. I need the whole shebang. Please give me a nice research project on these moms please i want to know it all they sound fun and it's different like the one was a 14 year old boy this guy was a senior he's probably 18 he's getting ready to go to probably like you know college at this point it's prom but still if you're (laughs) if you're that if you're that mom's kid i don't know man it's uh i would be like oh jesus my mom's making out with fucking jeff over there on the dance floor. I'm I would what would you rather, Kirsten? Your mom make out with one of the dudes in the football team, or would you rather your mom be the one who shit on the floor in the bathroom? Uh, I might just have to go with the shit on the floor and just say she has like a medical condition. Yeah, that one's a little more yeah, that one's better. I mean, how bad could it have been where it's like like did she miss the toilet or did she just like cop a squat out from one of the sinks you know was it like in the public part or was it in a stall because yeah you could pass that one off that's a little less tough it's gross and definitely adds to the fanfare of the out of control wild moms but at the end of the day that's like the least of their concerns and i you know after she shit in the bathroom maybe she was actually doing a service she's like you know what'll stop the other moms from doing coke in the bathroom if i shit on the floor but i bet that didn't defer them in any way or deter them in any way 
Well, let's wrap things up with another story from Luke Rutz. This one uh, involves fast food as well. Not a murder happening at the fast food. This time instead, a Florida pastor was arrested this week after allegedly masturbating at the same Starbucks where he was previously accused of similar behavior. Yes, that's right. This man had masturbated at a Starbucks where he was previously accused of having similar behavior. So that man has not jacked off in a Starbucks, but one time, but two. That's if a man jerks off in a Starbucks, that's when you put one of those wanted posters up and you go, you see this guy, he's not allowed in here, you know, but they evidently let this guy back in and, uh, you know, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice. It's my bad or whatever that saying is, <laughs> you know, uh, in a statement, Shared to social media, this is in fucking Florida because I recognize this county, uh, Osceola County, is that how you say it? O-S-C-E-O-L-A, that's Florida, right? Give me a goog on that. Yeah, kissing me, it is in Florida, I knew it. All the fun things happen there. In a statement to social media, the sheriff's department said it had received a report about a man exposing his sexual organs while masturbating at the Starbucks location in Kissimmee on May 9th. The department's SVU division, that's uh, for those who don't watch uh, Law and Order, that's Special Victims Unit. They investigated the report, finding that not only was the accused individual in question, Muniz Cologne, but he had also faced similar charges at the very same Starbucks in the past. Now, where I'm from in Buffalo and even here around in California and Los Angeles, and I would imagine in most parts of the country, there is a litany of Starbucks. Back where I, in my hometown, there's a Starbucks on my mo- the street my mom lives on. There's one at the one corner and then there's one just at the other corner. There's two within like walking distance to her. This man could have just went and if he needs to JSD at a Starbucks, pick a different location. At the end of the day, you're like, I already got caught at that one. I'm not going. I wouldn't even go back there for a fucking chai latte at that point. If I got caught jerking off in the Starbucks, I'm not I'm like, I'll go get my iced coffee someplace else. This guy's like, no, I'm going to go fucking jerk off in here again. Detectives with the SVU unit. Uh, investigated the allegations, and it was determined uh, that this man, again, was the subject. In addition, the investigation revealed that he had previously had similar charges that occurred in the same location. I wonder what, you know, it doesn't get, these things, you know, obviously it makes my imagination run wild. I want to know so much, like, does he make an order and then sit down and just stroke his dick in the middle of the Starbucks? Or is he going out to the patio? Is he doing it in the bathroom? He's a pastor for Christ's sake. And also like the church that employs this guy, are they like, yeah, come on back. At least you're not fucking boys. Come on in. You're just jerking off in a Starbucks. That's fine. You're not having sex and you're not sleeping with children. So you're all right in our book. Come back into the church, my friend. It just makes my imagination run wild. I mean, I have publicly masturbated. And I will say that, you know, I think every guy has at some point, And I'm not saying like, you know, in the wide open. When I was like, I don't know, 14 or something like that. I went into a bathroom of a Hills, which is a department store. While my mom was just droning about the store for hours and hours, I was like, I have to go to the bathroom. And I went into the bathroom and I jade my D. I'll admit it. I have friends who admit it, doing it in various, you know, during puberty. Not when we're old, though. I'm not, not, I'm too lazy to even jerk off in my house now. You know what I mean? Let alone go someplace to do it. That's insanity once you get old. I don't understand how this pastor would go about it. Have you ever heard of this kind of thing before? Or did I just blow your mind by saying that I've done it in public like that? No, no, I've definitely heard of it before. Yeah, right? Everyone's doing it. Where are some places that you've heard? Um, Walmart bathrooms are another one. Yeah, it's usually yeah. just it's some like grimy bathroom. department store bathroom, you know? I mean, I've jerked off in my car on long road trips. I think we had a kid do it in the science room of um, our school. In the science room? Yeah, his own little experiment. <laughs> Into one of the beakers or some shit? Like, what was he... How did you find that out? Was that just a rumor going around yeah, the school? he's just a friend that told me. Oh, okay. I never did it in school, did I? Even in a bathroom at school? You know, when you're just getting boners and you have to put your binder in front of it? I never really had... Because I, I think I was just too scared to do it in school. 
Yeah, I definitely didn't do it in school, but definitely in like Hills and then in a Target one time, probably in the bathroom, like you said, with the Walmart. Yeah, as 14 year olds, you're just your dick is. But but as a fucking pastor, it doesn't say how old he is. I don't believe I just put it down here. Oh, here it is. It says nothing of his age. But I would imagine he is middle-aged to above middle-aged. How do you have that much testosterone raging through you there? Unless, unless there's like one of the, he's like, there's this barista at this Starbucks that just curls my toes. I got to tell you. But who knows, folks? If you ever masturbated in public, give me the locations. I want to find out where the roaches jerked off in public. I want to find out the weirdest ones. I'm going to go through all the comments and find out. I want to hear about them, my friends. So, or you can always email your public masturbation story to Josh Potter Show at gmail.com. You can send in your roach reportings. You can send in music the way that Jay Crates has sent in this bad boy to say the most is the name of the song. Thank you so much, Jay Crates, for sending that in. Again, Josh Potter Show at gmail.com is the place to go and send everything, anything about the show. Also, remember, July 16th, big, big show happening in San Diego. Two shows, actually. Two big shows happening. Come to the late show. It's going to get wild. Come to the early show. I promise that one will be wild as well. July 16th, Mic Drop Comedy Club. In the meantime, uh, July 13th, I will be at the Comedy Store doing Rich Voss and Bonnie McFarlane's Would You Date Him show. And then well into the uh, in the fall, we're adding dates all the time. I'm going to have some here in Southern California that I'm going to let you know about. Arizona, Texas, let you know about those down the road. But keep in mind, if you live in the Chicago land area, August third or August 11th through 13th, five shows happening that weekend. Please to be coming to those. And then on August 25th, I'll be in Philadelphia. Cannot wait to come back to Philadelphia to perform at Helium Comedy Club. You can get all those tickets and information on the shows just by going over to my Instagram at Josh underscore Potter, or you can go on Twitter at J underscore Potter, or you can just Google my name uh, and uh, the city and that'll show up as well. But thank you so much for listening. If you listen, please rate, review, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a little stars, whatever it is wherever you listen. And if you're watching on YouTube, please continue to subscribe and uh, leave a comment and hit that like button, hit that little bell. All the all of it helps, and it takes two seconds for you, my friends. So I appreciate you very much. I love you, and we will see you next Tuesday right here on The Josh Potter Show.